Yeah, welcome. My name's Toby. I'm product lead here at Amazio. I'm based in Canberra. And I'm Sean, technical account manager uh, at Amazio, based in Wellington, New Zealand, and have just recovered from a power cut. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. It's it's my turn this time, Sean. <laughs> I'm going I'm going dark on you halfway through. Um. So yeah, we um we figured we'd take this opportunity. I think we nominally titled our session, um, "Know Your Enemy." Because one of the things that, that we think is really important um, in Drupal, in hosting, in in web, is being prepared for whatever's coming at you. But that preparation comes with an awful lot of knowledge. Um, so one of the things that Sean and the rest of the team of TAMS do is sort of keep a constant eye on sites, on what's happening to our sites, what's happening to other sites, what's happening around the world. And we thought we'd run you through some of our experiences in hosting large, high volume sites for multiple markets across the world. Um, we could do a super quick who is Amazing IO session, but looking down the list of attendees, I think there's probably pretty good knowledge. Um, we're a open source web ops hosting company. We have worked very closely with Salsa um, on a couple of the, the large Salsa projects here in Australia. Um, but we work with a number of customers across the world um, hosting out of, I think we've got 30, um, something like 30 clusters under management now um, across the world, pharmaceuticals, um, finance, media, government. And um, we have some pretty good experience at, at a number of these, um, in a number of these scenarios. So I figured we'd just run through some of the things that we've seen, some of the things that we work with and some of the, the, the tools and some of the um, uh, knowledge that we can try and impart on people and show why knowing your enemy is as important as protecting against enemies you don't know. Yeah, and um, there's a few things that we can show off during this, um, like, just disclaimer, this is all like going to be winged. And I also have a five-year-old in the background. So like, it's got a bad degree, Messi. <laughs> um, so I'll just share uh, the right screen. And hopefully you can put Toby and I on the left in the, hey, oh, not yet. Can you put the share screen in the middle? No. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Apologies cool, cool. to Iona for that. <laughs> yeah, let's bring it on you. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is even remotely legible. I'll just try to zoom in a little bit. Um, so the first thing that we do at Amazio is we run literally every single domain that we possibly can through um, our CDN, which is Fastly. And the very first thing that that does is protects us against um, all the boring attacks. So um, by boring, I mean like level three and level four, these are like ICMP floods, UDP fl floods and stuff like that, which is, it's just nice not having to worry about all that stuff. Um, and what you're looking at here is um, a, a live view on who's actually a, uh, visiting the the caching score site <laughs> globally so um yeah that's a that's pretty neat um the next thing is um it's all well and good to kind of see like traffic as it kind of comes in but it's really nice to introspect that and uh work out you know whether that traffic is desirable uh, because ultimately you don't want to send it at your origin if you don't need to because you know that's just a win for everybody um so what we do do is uh log every uh request that hits fastly into uh, a log file that goes into s3 and elasticsearch um and it's all logged in a friendly uh, json so you can do things like jq analysis if you just want to get something quick and dirty like how many requests were from this ip address during these day periods um, or if you want something more detailed, you might switch over to Elasticsearch to, um, you know, 
do trends or visualizations or stuff like that. So, um, but I mean, like to do this is all kind of reactive. And so some of the cool stuff that we've been um, playing with recently has been on the more proactive side of things. And um, one of our larger customers that just has a, a single site with us um, in a single cluster um, is a smart sheet. So, and what we've done recently with them is they wanted to like, they had a, a lot of attacks hitting them, like typically bot related. They had a lot of bots filling in their forms or yeah, enumerating pagination. Like if, if you've ever seen someone get to page 1036, you know, they've clearly not done that legitimately. No human being um, has the power to, <laughs> to do that. Um, so yeah, for them, they needed something a little bit more proactive than, you know, playing whack-a-mole with the, um, the traffic there. So a new technology we have the ability to do, and I'll see if I can make it bigger, um, is we can deploy something called signal sciences. And, and how we deploy it's quite unique as well. So it's deployed on the ingress on the Kubernetes cluster. So anything that hits origin, irrespective of the domain name, the host header, whether they even have a host header, um, will flow through signal sciences. And SIGSI, is I will abbreviate them too because it's incredibly hard to say, um, is kind of that more proactive layer where it's analyzing the traffic, not just for your site, but globally. So one of its uh, neat features is it has something called a SIGSI IP. So if IP addresses have been known to do really dumb stuff um, across the network of SIGSI, then they'll get flagged and other sites will benefit from that, so like, a, like a network effect. So in, in, in this case, 103,000 requests were instantly just uh, black hole because they were silly buggers somewhere else globally and we didn't have to like manually tag them or you know do anything to um, uh, to do that really um, on top of that there's the standard you know OWASP you know are they doing SQL injection you know god bless them um, cross-site scripting command execution all that kind of stuff and then if you do see someone doing something silly, you can find out what they've been doing. So this is an IP address from the country of Germany, and um, you can see that they're yeah they're just doing stuff that people just do on the internet. So they're requesting index.php, but with a query parameter and uh, and null bytes and a whole bunch of other things. But the cool thing is that you see that um, SIGSI is returning uh, 406, which basically means don't do that. Um, I don't want it. <laughs> and it does this decision uh, most of the time less than one millisecond. So it's extremely quick. And uh, you know, I was, you know, that one took three. That one took three. So yeah, that one's two. So it's extremely quick. It doesn't rely on a third party to make that decision. It just every now and then just checks in with the SIG sign network to update its rule sets and and you know, make sure it's running running the latest um, sort of blocking behavior. Um, and what's really cool is we can take these, oh, we're seeing like a bunch of like dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash sort of path traversal things. And we're like, oh, what about the customers who don't have signal sciences, you know, because it's not free. Um, what do they do? And how do they benefit from this? And that's where and this is going to get extremely techy very quickly. So ignore this screen if you don't want to read code. Um, but we can translate this into rules that effectively run at our edge layer inside Fastly. So without, I don't want to explain that, Reggie, because I don't truly understand it. It took a little while to get right. But <laughs> yeah. And um, Basically, what this means is it's going to look for dot dot slash in the URL or the query string. Um, and if it finds it, it's going to uh, block it effectively. So this way, other customers of Amazio will get the benefits of these rules 
um, without having to have the kind of more proactive kind of blocking. Um, and there's even a dedicated one for what we just saw, which is if you have Etsy password in a, a URL, just go away. <laughs> I don't want to see you. And uh, yeah, and you could actually see that um, I just type in uh, Etsy password, which I haven't done, and hopefully this works. Um, there you go. That's what um, that's what the WAF looks like. <laughs> that's the band hammer. Um, so yeah, I think that's um, I guess what I spend a bit of my time doing. And I'm sorry, I've just stopped screen sharing. Can you uh, <laughs> keeping your day interesting? Um, so that's what I spend a lot of my kind of day doing, just looking after um, the emerging threats that we're seeing. And uh, often it's for technologies that you won't be running. Like there's some firewall that's just had a CV announced with remote code execution. And someone's just wrote some crawler to scan every IP address that they can find. And, you know, it's often, you know, there'll be like JSP or ASPX or, whole bunch of other things that you don't really see in Drupal land, but they'll still hit your Drupal site with it. This is, I mean, this is one of the things that came up in the, the session this morning. Someone asked the question, why, why do you need a CDN? And a CDN does some of this work for you. It relieves some of the pressure. It takes some of the load. Good CDNs may have some um, capabilities, but there's so many levels and so many layers that these malicious actors or <laughs> inadvertently malicious actors because we all we've all seen um spiders that get stuck in infinite loops in search pages and stuff like that that can wreak havoc with a site so having the WAF capabilities having those sort of bot detection capabilities is is really important for us as the first line of defense but as part of an organization that learns being able to see what's happening in one place and utilize that information in more places is is absolutely critical and it's not just at the fastly or the signal sciences layer because of the way that containerized hosting works we've got nginx configuration per site so we've got a standard nginx configuration for drupal as we learn things from the edge we can pass that all the way back down to the individual Drupal containers so that sites who elect to host their sites or organizations that elect to host their sites without CDNs and without WAFs get some of that knowledge too. So really make sure it passes all the way through the organization. I mean, that's right. And like, that's where a lot of the, or the goodies in nginx.conf um, everything that's in there is in there for a reason. Um, you know, one of the, the kind of the, the best goodies in there is it blocks anything from executing unless it's index.php, um, which if you run a Drupal site is really cool. Um, it also blocks the, the, the statistics module, which I also think is quite cool because <laughs> that module is also terrible. Um, and yeah, I, I, that's that trickle down kind of effect that, you know, you can sort of block it at the layer that makes the most sense and um, yeah, having it, um, pushing it towards the edge does mean it just happens a bit faster and you can survive a bit more of a volumetric attack, but say you go off and use your own CDN, then um, you're gonna need to push it down the layer if you can't push it up. Another thing we do is a, is a lot of sort of traffic scale and shape monitoring. So um, for the larger customers, for the larger sites, we have a fairly intimate knowledge of, of what their traffic patterns look like. So we could tell what is a good day, what is a bad day. And um, we collect a lot of this stuff. We run like vast amounts of Elasticsearch logging. We do an awful lot of Prometheus and Grafana monitoring of sort of scale up events and being able to quickly and easily identify outliers there is something that um, the team is is really keen on because we might not see it come through ordinary channels but trying to work out why a site suddenly goes up to 12 pods or why something's slow to scale up or why um what are the knock-on effects we may see 
the leading edge of it before we actually see a site outage, before we actually see database um, issues. So it's really, there's an awful lot of monitoring that goes into seeing what a site is, how it lives and breathes, what normal looks like. Yep, I was just frantically seeing if I can bring up a Grafana dashboard. <laughs> Let's show something useful. <laughs> it, it, you can tell Sean I did a lot of preparation for this. We, we were going to, but his power was out. So, oh yeah, it just ruined everything. <laughs> um, has anybody got any questions that they desperately want to find out from us, um, or contributions, comments, etc.? More than happy to take those. Um, for those that weren't in the talk this morning, Sean did a talk about caching gamification um, and launched his new uh, cachingscore.com site to the world where you can find out how good or bad your site is. Um, and this comes back to the optimizing performance, really pushing for reliability. Um, all of these things count. It's, it's not just making a site and putting it on the internet and letting the world consume it. It's making a site, putting it on the internet, making sure it's as good as it could be, making sure it's as responsive, making sure it's stable, making sure that it's adequately protected. They're all part of that wraparound service. It doesn't finish on go live day. Yeah, and actually it's not really kind of talked about too much, but like having a super high cash hit rate is the best form of defense you can possibly have. Um, I once worked on a site um, that was, um, the, I think the Commonwealth Games 2018 uh, Gold Coast site. Um, I don't think it's around anymore, but um, for that, we, we had a, a seating in place there. And I think we got the cash hit rate up to 99.925. Um, so like that means like 75 out of every 100,000 requests were able to trickle through. Um, and I think we went a little bit overboard on that because we did everything we possibly could to <laughs> prevent uh, having a miss. But, you know, there's nothing stopping any other equally as busy site having something which is also as impressive. Um, it just may mean that you might need to get a bit tricky um, by putting through like allow lists for query string parameters, stuff like that becomes more useful um, to get that last few little bits of uh, hit rate. But I mean, as a result, like, I mean, how can you attack a site that's perfectly cacheable? Like, because you can just turn your origin off and the site still can still functions. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh, I worked on a project and I just frantically checked the uh, attendees list to see if I'm embarrassing anybody here um, that uh, was had a really high cache offload. Um, and the request from the business area was to test it until it breaks. And I pointed out that there's much greater resources than me at play here and testing one of these large global CDN providers until it breaks would be a very expensive, very expensive errand. You'd have to spin up an awful lot of um, floods to be able to take one of them down. So yeah, we're good at some aspects of the business, but these CDNs, uh, they're incredible at handling immense volumes of traffic. That's that's their day job. So let's make them do the work and not our creaky old database servers and backend PHP. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sorry, just juggling kids. Um... <laughs> the the third aspect is that the kind of work we do with agencies on sort of optimizing their sites behind the scenes like sean in his years has seen an awful lot of things and some of the clients we work most closely with will sort of help try and guide them down the the path most traveled because anytime you go out on your own if, if you're searching in stack overflow and um no one's <laughs> seem to have had your problem before it means one of two things you're either a genius or an idiot um I, I like to think that i'm a genius when i find no answers but it also likely means that you're the first person to have thought about doing this and that's never a great place to be so a lot of the experience comes with helping steer people towards solutions that do drive high capability they drive um stability and they drive scalability that's really important that sites are looking at this and just because a solution works it doesn't mean it's the best solution for you yeah 
I'm the biggest proponent of like just sometimes the best answer isn't like the the shiniest um, answer. Um, if you pick on JS frameworks, then there's always going to be a new JavaScript framework of choice. But um, yeah, something about Drupal is it has like cache tags kind of built in. If you want to do something with JavaScript, now you've got to um, yeah uh, somehow come up with a a similar way to uh, execute the same built-in kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I'd be interested to see what those other talks are today around decoupling and how they deal with um, uh, cache sniping, um, so to speak, rather than doing full cache purges. Um, because ideally you do exactly what the cache tags are doing, which is just getting rid of the smallest amount possible from cache. Um, I'm more than happy to wrap up now, unless anyone else has got questions or comments or anything they want us to handle. I do have to run off and retrieve my children from their educational establishment. We've got nothing to cover then thank you so much um for for listening to us um check us out maisy.io or google for us we're pretty much everywhere these days um but more than yeah. happy to take any of these kind of questions um you'll find us sean and i both around the drupal slack regularly um ask us questions seek our advice sometimes we're kind and generous with it other times we're Time um, poor. <laughs> <laughs> Time poor is a good answer, yes. <laughs> but yeah, also, um, if you want to know more about um, the advanced uh, WAF capabilities, then yeah, always up for a, a private demo if you want to, you know, do something a bit more, um, yeah, exact to the, your customer's requirements or your own requirements. Yeah, happy to go through that on a more of a one-on-one -on -one basis as well if that makes more sense for you. Perfect. Well, we'll let you get on with your day. You've got two minutes back that you didn't have before. So go make it. You probably can't make a cup of tea in two hours, two minutes. But um, thank you so much.